well, one person cried out for advice with executions, and I am nothing if not willing to continue to provide advice on a topic I may or may not be qualified to talk about. I've written a few executions, most canon to the original Danganronpa the Hunted, a couple of non-canon executions, and probably a couple lost to the sands of time on the internet. So, your culprit has just been caught out for murder. They've given their dramatic speech about their motivations for murdering their fellow man, and Monokuma has started their punishment. And you've come to a screeching halt, unsure of how their Blaze of Glory or Amanda Young tier saw trap should play out. And so, you've come to my collection of Foggone advice for help. Do keep in mind that I am also a fan of some of the absolute goriest franchises vaguely in the pop culture zeitgeist, or at least I have a passing interest in learning about them. I am a huge Mortal Kombat fan, I know about the Eternal Champion stage fatalities, I have a passing interest in Corpse Party, well, the first game, and Saw, and it's all stuff that makes Danganronpa executions look pretty tame. So, uh, bear in mind that I'm desensitized to extreme gore. I'll be talking about advice for all Thongon, since I don't believe executions need to be gory to be good. But just bear in mind I don't have a filter for that sort of thing. And bear in mind this is all my opinion to at least give you some ideas. If you have things that go against the advice I give, but still work for your story, then great! So, my first bit of advice is to look at and deconstruct canon executions. See what makes the memorable ones so memorable. I mean, they're all pretty memorable for various reasons, but that's largely because the tone of each one is different. Danganronpa 1 focused on ironic punishments for its three culprits that focused more on the psychology behind them. Leon is established pretty early on as a guy whose natural talent for baseball is something he actively came to Hope's Peak to rewrite, and to make himself a singer instead. Mondo's biggest insecurity is that his cocky personality led to his brother getting Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Celestia is obsessed with ideas of grandeur and the bourgeoisie macabre, and despises the ordinary and boring. Their punishments reflect that. Leon gets pelted with the talent he says is something he despises in an execution that is both psychologically traumatizing and physically horrific. Mondo is strapped into the very thing that he already nearly died on and watched his brother die on, and as funny as it is from an outside perspective, being spun around so rapidly that your insides liquefy and re-solidify as a churned mass? Yeah, that's not a pleasant way to go. And Celestia almost dies in an execution she perceives as grand, an age-old execution, and then her actual cause of death is being hit by a truck, a completely mundane death. Looking over it, not only do they die, horribly, but their final moments are punctuated with their fears, what they despise, what they came to avoid by coming to Hope's Peak Academy. This works wonderfully in conjunction with the tone of the first game, which is more psychological, especially given it's the only Danganronpa game that takes place almost entirely indoors to aid the claustrophobia factor, with any resemblance of sunlight or the outside world locked away until only a handful of students remain. And yes, I do want to talk about that in another video. I was going to talk about the other games in as much depth, but that segment was going to be five minutes of me bitching about the executions I thought were rubbish and deep analysis of the ones I like. Which is great for the people who like hearing me bitch and delve into deep analysis, but not great for those who are here for execution advice. So I encourage you to think about your favorite execution from the games and why that's your favorite, beyond if it's a character you love or hate dying. How's the execution relate back to the character? You'll notice that even though a witch hunt has nothing to do with gambling, it relates to other aspects of Celestia's character. Her being a reverse weeaboo, her fetish for Rococo and Victorian fashion and architecture, and the fact that crashing a stake burning with a fire engine is a lot easier to make more psychologically brutal than just sticking her in the guillotine and pulling the lever. Think about other aspects of your character beyond their talent, or better, combine aspects of your character's persona and their talent into the execution. I think only Pekos pulls this off effectively. Every other execution guns for either talent or personality, but hers contains elements of both and is one of the most effective in the series because of it, in my opinion, especially since it also has lasting consequences for one of the survivors. Break down what makes your favorite execution so interesting on more than a level of it looking cool. My second piece of advice is to know your character inside and out. That's whether it's a canon Danganronpa character, an original character, or a canon character from another series, the three Falun Gong settings. 
If your character is well established, they should have wants and fears to work off of, like the aforementioned examples from the original Danganronpa. Punctuate their execution with what they want and or what they fear, or a major component of who they are. As already stated, there are executions that cause a talent to take a back seat, even if there are certainly ways to incorporate their talent into their demise. But for the most part, executions should be a very personal matter for your character and it should involve something that they find personal. There are some exceptions to this, depending on the mood you're trying to create, such as an execution feeling impersonal towards the late game to suggest that the mastermind has already died and their killing game is now on autopilot. But for the most part, you'll want the execution to feel tailor-made to the character and their values. I'll write you three examples, one of each kind of thong on, to give you an idea of what I mean by an execution that is personal. Granted, you'll likely only be familiar with one example character, but I'll give you pointers for the other two that you're less likely to know. Mikot has a canon execution, but I think we can do better than it. I also think we can do better than just having Monokuma fail surgery on her, especially since, you know, she's a nurse, not a surgeon. Granted, the execution I came up with doesn't really work for where Mikon is in Super Danganronpa 2 at time of death, but let's face it, most people try to forget what happened in Chapter 3, even if I'll stubbornly remind them. Mikon's biggest fear is being completely ignored, and Monokuma is inside of a virtual world where he can do virtually anything. Quick self-harm and suicide content warning, I'll give you enough time to tab back in from Stardew Valley to continue to skip the timestamp on screen. 10, 9, 8... Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, pachinko machine. Mihan is locked into a box that seems completely transparent. She can see out to the others, but they're completely ignoring her. On the ground are a bunch of medical tools. Mihan might not be super familiar with them, but though she tries to use them to get the others' attention by banging them against the glass, they don't turn around to face her. And so, little by little, she starts carving into herself to get their attention. First, tiny cuts that bleed superficially, but then the cuts get larger and deeper. The spots she carves and stabs and slices into become more and more vital in a bid to get the attention of the others, even if it's just to tell her that she's a horrible person. But the whole time, they don't look at her. She's definitely passed more than enough cuts that she'll bleed out soon by the time she knows something wrong with behind her. She turns her head and sees one person finally watching her, but the person is the person that she killed. The box then glitches out and destroys itself as Mikong carves a killing blow into a major artery. The survivors had been watching her the whole time, she realizes, as she slumps to the floor in front of them. Granted, that execution is very obviously fan-made. It's a bit too overtly brutal for the canon games. For the second example, I'll use Sarabella from Skullgirls, a 2012 2D fighting game with absolutely gorgeous hand-drawn sprites that may have inspired Cuphead. The timeline lines up. So, I do have to establish Sarabella to the 30,000 or so of you that aren't Skullgirls fans like I am. Sarabella is a circus acrobat in Circuit de Carte, a flashy, energetic, and center of attention type of person. She's the character the story considers pure of heart, something that's sought after by the Skull Heart, which is a MacGuffin like if a genie was allowed to turn you into an undead monster for your stupid wish and make you wreck house. Put simply. We recently learned Cellarbella was orphaned at a young age due to the previous Skullgirl, and... Ah, uh, uh, fuck it. She has an Electra complex regarding her adopted dad, v Vitaly Medici, the son of Lorenzo Medici, head of the Medici Mafia. And if you don't know what an Electra complex is, you can either take the blue pill and live the rest of your life in ignorant bliss, or take the red pill and Google it. But regardless, all she really wants is to make Vitaly proud. So, the execution. Sarabella is placed on one platform of a tightrope made of guitar wire. Below her, instead of a safety net, is a pit of sharp spikes. A baton is tossed to her with a bomb attached to the end that detects movement and counts down faster when it's not spinning. Entrance of the gladiators are something similar place, and Sarabella makes her way across, using vice versa to keep the baton twirling. Because she's trained for this her whole life, the tightrope being thin isn't really a problem to her. Various items are tossed at her, but she manages to dodge them across the rope by ducking and swinging around on it. The crowd cheers Sarabella on, and she's smiling nervously, happy to be the center of attention, but knowing she's wanted dead. She spots Vitaly in the crowd, however, and is full of renewed vigor, eager to survive for his sake. 
She dodges several more items launched at her, the items getting bigger and more difficult to avoid, and so the bomb does tick down some. However, as Cerebell dodges a large anvil, the anvil clips the baton and knocks the bomb out of its binding, sending it hurtling into the crowd towards Vitaly. In a moment of fear and seeing no other option, Cerebella leaps from the tightrope and bats the bomb towards the ceiling. The bomb goes off with a pitiful explosion that would have barely injured anyone, but Cerebella gets impaled on the spikes she leapt for to save Vitaly. And honestly, it wouldn't matter if it was a fake Vitaly or the real one. It, it would be the same result either way. Now, you may have noticed that both of these punishments have had the characters effectively deal the final hand in their own death. That can be effective for certain characters, but note that in the original Danganronpa, all of the executions in the first one were effectively automated, and it's actually way less common than you might think for the culprit to effectively kill themselves. Of the executions that actually result in a flesh and blood character's death, only three are in the hands of those who actually receive punishment. Peko, Gundam, and Kirumi. Gundam's was dumb and goes completely against his never give up on life motto since he could have avoided it by not standing directly in the path of an oncoming stampede. Peko stopped fighting because of her guilt and wounding Fuyuhiko, and Kirumi's death is a direct reference to a folklore tale dis designed to display that despite her selfless devotion, she has hubris. This makes sense due to their self-sacrificing natures, well, Kirumi and Peko's self-sacrificing natures, and makes sense for a character like Sarah Bella when Vitaly is concerned. But let's use an OC of mine for the last example so we can see an execution that is out of the culprit's control. Aizo Mizukawa is my ultimate aquarium curator. She runs an aquarium up in Hokkaido that is effectively the setting SeaWorld. Millions of guests a year, activities for all ages and budgets, and even rumored shady dealings behind the scenes. Though they take better care of the animals than the real-life American counterpart, there's rumors going around that she has backdoor dealings with Yakuza groups in order to help keep the park running. Aiko didn't succeed with murder in my original script. They fell victim to the Uno reverse card. This execution, however, may or may not show up in The Hunted whenever I get around to actually finishing and releasing that. Anyway, I promised an execution that was less falling to their own self-sacrificing nature and more someone getting their shit rocked for killing someone. Aiko gets dropped into a large tank of water with thick glass walls and a lid is slid on top, trapping her inside. Makima closes a pair of curtains around the tank, and when he reveals them again, Aiko is surrounded by sharks. However, rather than the expected outcome of simply getting devoured by the sharks, they manage to befriend them and calm them down. Monokuma then raises the curtain a little more, revealing a freezer unit and flicks the on switch. The water rapidly gets cooler and cooler, ice crystals beginning to form at the very edges of the tank and around the freezer unit. The sharks, being cold-blooded, succumb to a more peaceful lethargy, but it's not so pleasant for the warm-blooded Aiko. They try in vain to use the shark's body heat to get their own heat insulated, but while they have incredible lung power, she is still slowly drowning and freezing to death at the same time. The water starts to rapidly freeze over as Aiko feels the burning of her lungs, and as they release her breath, unable to hold on any longer, she freezes over, their final breath actually preserved by the ice. You may have been able to guess the main inspiration for that execution was Aoi Asahina's unused execution from the art book, and there's nothing wrong with taking what's been done before and improving on it. Hell, they executed someone with a rocket three times in the canon series, once per game, and usually up the stakes each time. And always to someone with dark purple hair now that I think about it. But really, feel free to take the skeleton of an execution and build up upon it. But I really don't advise just copy-pasting an execution. The third tip is actually one I need to bear in mind because, more because I have a tolerance for gore, but it's this. Be sure your executions fit your overall theme and tone. If you don't know what the theme and tone are for your Fongon, you're nowhere near far enough in your Fongon's development to be thinking of how to execute your culprits. And if you think theme and tone aren't important, well, I'm not entirely sure why you're looking for Fongon advice since quality is not a concern of yours. Now, there is no hard and fast rule on how to adhere to the tone, and I can't give you an exact amount of help for this tip. I can generally give a vague idea as to what will result in what, but it's more something you have to feel out for yourself. If your Fongon is generally lighthearted and tame, especially compared to its murders, say your first victim dies from something relatively painless, like an instantaneous blow to the head. 
It would then be jarring to watch this character's murderer get ripped apart like they were the protagonist of 1992's Waxworks and they just fucked something up. And again, you can look it up, but this time I'll warn you that it's a lot, even for me, so yeah, be careful. Maybe wait until you're 18 if you're one of those high schoolers watching my videos because math was a snooze fest, and to be honest, same. Conversely, a dark, gritty, gory fog on where someone could wind up completely maimed by a culprit with guts hanging out or losing their head entirely would probably be a bit jarring if their culprits were executed with a single, near bloodless shot to the head. So make sure your executions fit the tone of your fog on. But maybe that jarring tone is something you want to create contrast for for the purposes of your themes. For example, uh, culprits killing relatively humanely, while the culprits themselves get subjected to horrific executions that would make Sachiko from Course Party tell the Mastermind to turn the gore down, might indicate that the Mastermind is a cold and uncaring, or even sadistic, character. The characters might kill humanely for good reasons, but the Mastermind does not care. They revel in the horrific punishment for their own entertainment, or, alternatively, may even see it as necessary to their ideology that no murder is a good murder, and the gory execution is necessary to prove this somehow. Something like John Kramer from the Saw series. Although this specific time of tone shift will likely not be as appreciated by people who came expecting a lighthearted, family-friendly murder game. As much of an oxymoron as that is. Conversely, maybe the mastermind running the killing game where culprits are executed relatively painlessly, even though the victims are subjected to horrible murders, might see themselves as a paragon of morality in a sea of wrathful hedonism, who trapped all these clearly violent and evil individuals into a murder game to cleanse themselves and thin their own numbers, and tries to keep their own virtue by humanely executing the culprits. I mean, it's still murder, but the mastermind sees it more as some kind of mercy killing for their crimes. So this would work well for characters that have a sense of moral fanaticism being the mastermind, so anti-villains and the like. Again, these are just a few examples, and if you can make something else entirely work, go for it. But they need to work, or the executions will feel less like a fatality and more like a formality. Executions shouldn't just happen because it is a fog on rampa. They should serve your story as well to re-establish tone, whether it's to introduce a new one or reinforce the current one, or to push one of our character's arcs. This will go a long way to make your executions feel well put together and organic, rather than forced in by format, which quite a few executions in fangans do. Lastly, show us how the other characters would react to the execution before, during, and after, or at least before and after if they have no reason to show up during. You'll notice at the end of Leon's execution, every surviving character's reaction is briefly shown on screen. You get a sense for how these characters react to watching their fellow man die brutally in front of them. And even though most of them barely knew Leon, it's still, you know, Disturbing to watch a man be executed in front of you, regardless of what they did. Even with characters that aren't well-liked by the point of their execution, the reactions of their cast may just be incredibly hollow because they were still a person. It's honestly very jarring when the characters almost actively cheer for an execution, or even do cheer for an execution. The audience might cheer, since they often recognize the character isn't real, but when the characters do it, that's very likely to bring your readers out of the story if they aren't established to be bloodthirsty as fuck all of the time. But they'd all need to be as deranged, if not more so, than Junko to make that work. And that setting does mean that it'll be difficult to have an identify to identify with anyone present, unless it's ve under very specific writing circumstances that I'm forced to admit or people will assume ignorance by default. Take Korkio and Gundam's cases. Both culprits reveled in their respective murders, and yet when push came to shove, Himiko and Akane, the people most affected by their choice of targets, aside from the targets themselves, weren't reveling in their executions, because that's not what a normal human being does. Most people would much rather remember the victim than the killer, because once someone's body goes cold, all that exists is their deeds and memory. With all that said, ensure the reactions to executions are consistent with your characters and where they're at. The first execution is likely to be an absolute shell shock, but by the fourth, everyone will likely be a little, or a lot, more desensitized to it. And don't try to go for bigger and bigger every time. That's likely to subject you to the law of diminishing returns, if not for your characters, then for your readers. So yeah, I hope that was all helpful information for your executions. 
I'm still very busy at the moment, so uploads will likely still be very infrequent. But regardless, I do have a few video ideas, and some that might even show up this year! Anyway, I hope that you're all having a good day. I'm sorry if you looked anything up and were traumatized, but I did try to warn you, and I will see you next time.